All right, so we're joined on, on from the campus of Jackson State University by Associate Professor of Computer Science, Dr. April Tanner. We uh, are recording this for all of our computer science engineering students in Madison County Schools, including our friends over at Shirley Simmons Middle School, Old Town Middle School, Ridge on High School, Madison Central, Rosa Scott, and Germantown Middle and High School, and the Academic Options Center. And I've got a room full here with me at Butler Jackson High School. And we are really interested to hear about the things that you do uh, in the Department of Computer Science Engineering there at Jackson State. Um, and we've had several other professionals uh, talk to us about the way technology changes and how it's used. But um, I know uh, you did go, and we'll talk about this here in a second, with the Tougaloo and then the Mississippi State. Um, and I'm sure even since then, technology uh, that you deal with every day has changed exponentially. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, before we get into what it is you f focus your research on in the classes there at Jackson State, um, because we do focus on our college career readiness, we'd love to hear about your experience at Tougaloo um, and then getting your master's and PhD at Mississippi State. Okay. Well, uh, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Um, well, I started uh, at Tougaloo College back in 99, which seems like a long time ago. But um, initially, uh, I started out as a biology major. <laughs> but quickly I learned that I did not like being in the lab. So I asked one of my friends, um, what is this computer science? And she was telling me a little bit about what they did, learning code, writing code and all that. I was like, well, I'll give this a try. And I've been in it ever since. So my experience at Tougaloo College was very um, good. My um, teacher, Ms. Streeter, she's getting ready to retire. She's been there a long, long time. Um, but, she, you know, she made it very interesting. We learned a lot um, taking the classes that she offered. And, um, yeah, so once I graduated from Tougaloo, um, I went to Mississippi State where I earned both my master's and PhD degrees. Um, I did focus on computer science at those institutions, at that institution as well. Um, my focus was in uh, digital forensics, uh, which we'll probably talk about, but pretty much it just focuses on like if an incident occurs um, dealing with digital devices, how do you recover that information from those devices? So um, that's, that's pretty much um, what I did at Mississippi State focusing on the digital forensic side of computer science. So not everything is about programming. There's lots of different components of computer science. Absolutely. And, and we've had, uh, and just last week, we had the infrastructure manager for the Department of Revenue uh, in, in Mississippi, and he really doesn't do a lot of coding. He focuses more on the hardware side, but he also focuses a lot on the forensics. So as somebody that teaches the forensics, explain a little bit, you know, especially some of our middle school, high school students may not understand what that is and why it's important, because companies will pay a lot of money to have somebody to handle their digital forensics. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm pretty sure most probably all of them, their parents may have watched CSI or those um, type of shows. But a lot of times with uh, CSI, you know, everything is fast forwarded. But um, when it comes to digital forensics, you're not looking at the actual physical things. You're looking at things that's related to digital devices. So that could be computers, um, cell phones, uh, tablets. Um, the uh, computer networks, you know, company networks and all of that. So pretty much when it comes to digital forensics, just like in real life, when, you know, some uh, incident happens, someone, you know, uh, is murdered or anything like that, that's when they come in to investigate. That's similar to what happens with digital forensics. We investigate um, what exactly happened. So we try to figure out what happened, when it happened, who did it, and so on. And a lot of times from that information that is gathered from those devices, you'll be able to determine all those things. Yeah, and and once somebody, you, you know, and, and one thing I always like to emphasize is that Jackson State may be an HBCU, but historically black does not mean exclusively black. Um, exactly. It's a very, very, especially your department is one of the most diverse uh, on campus, if, my, if not the most diverse because of the technology you guys have. So talk a little bit about the technology that you and your students work with to get this training and to become familiar with uh, this technology. Okay, so um, some of the tools um, that we work with, we have like a Celebrite, which is a device that can pretty much um, gather data from any type of digital device. So your cell phone that you have on you right now, I could plug it up to this device and it can. Um, get all your information off of there and store it on that device. And I can go back later on and look at it and see, you know, try to figure out what 
you know, like say for instance, you were a part of a crime, um, then I would be able to look at all of your information on that device and kind of put the pieces together to see, you know, exactly if you had something to do with it. Uh, we do use um, different tools for our classes as well. And because some of these tools cost a lot of money, uh, we use virtual environments where they can go on um, in virtual environments. So you can go through the web and use tools on somebody else's server and actually complete assignments. So, you know, even though we might not have it physically here, you're still learning the fundamentals of how to be um, a good digital forensic investigator or a computer scientist or cybersecurity specialist or whatever you want to do. Yeah, and and for and for students that go through that program or maybe even thinking about going through a similar program, what are some areas that will be hiring people with these skills? I mean, obviously, obviously the military is always looking for people, oh, yeah. financial institution, but what are some other uh, areas that you're seeing careers grow with this? So um, if you get a degree in computer science, bachelor's degree, you know, starting out, we've had students that start out making six figures oh. with a bachelor's degree, but computer science is interdisciplinary. So we, if you get a degree in computer science, you can work pretty much anywhere because of course, computers are everywhere. So, you know, healthcare, you can work for the hospital, you can work for the school that you're going to now because they need people to manage their networks. Um, Airlines, uh, banks, um, pretty much, it. of course, the government, of course, them, but um, just about any, anybody that has data, that stores data or uses data or the internet, pretty much you can work there because they have a team of cybersecurity professionals or just computer scientists um, that they need to manage and monitor their networks. Yeah, and and it's like, I'm glad you mentioned healthcare because that's probably the fastest growing area of technology now. Um, because I, I, I've heard doctors say all the time, you know, I know how to diagnose and how to give the care, but the, uh, but the computer people are the ones that have to be able to maintain those records. We have yeah. to be able to, you know, if, especially in a large hospital like UMC with a large database of clients, you know, any, ty any type of cyber attack or any type of, uh, any type of server failure could be catastrophic. It so, could be. Yeah. So those people are very, very invaluable to the healthcare industry and becoming more so. Yes. And, you know, um, those devices, like you just mentioned, those are programmed by computer scientists um, because with computer science, it involves developing software and, you know, so that it can run the way that the customer specifies. What do you what do you need me to do? So that computer scientist would develop that um, software especially for that um, that individual or company or, who, or whoever it is, so that it will work to their specifications and, um, you know, test it and make sure it doesn't have any bugs because, you know, pacemakers and different things like that do report back, you know, with heart palpations and all those different things. So um, computer science is, is not going away. There's lots of jobs available, you know, more jobs than there are people. So, um, you know, that, that they need. So, you know, it's a field that, you know, if you got a bachelor's degree in computer science, you wouldn't ever have to really look for a job because the jobs would be looking for you pretty much. Um, now, now uh, obviously you dated yourself because we're about the same age. Um, and just in our lifetime, I think we're at a, a really interesting spot because we have seen so much growth in technology from the time we were in middle school to now. Mm -hmm. So oh, even yeah. if you've gotten your degree, you know, uh, this is a field where you're constantly learning things. You know, if you're, this is something you don't want to get bored with. Um, right. So talk a little bit about how it's changed just since you've been a professor, because I'm sure you've seen four or five different things come out since you've been in this position. Yeah. So, you know, when I was, you know, coming up, I remember pagers, you know, <laughs> back then, you know, that was just somebody calling you and, and your little side machine, well, device would beep and then you go call them. So it went from those to cell phones. And then at that time, like I've told my students, cell phones were just used for calling. You know, we didn't have these advanced smartphones that they have now. It was just texting or calling. And then you could even take pictures. So, you know, it advanced from there to smartphones where it's, you know, it's, pretty much a small computer where you can do lots of things with it now, you know, way more than what we were um, doing earlier. So you have your tablets, you have all of these um, IOT devices, uh, you know, that's 
the new thing now where all of these different devices are connected to the internet. So they can report back just like at my house. I can be in Jackson, but I can open my garage if I want to, or um, turn something on, you know, with these devices that are connected to the internet. So there's been re your refrigerator. It can order things for you. You can talk to the, um, what is the thing with Amazon? I can't think of what it is. Uh, uh -huh. Alexa, yeah, I have everything. Oh, she turned on. <laughs> but um, Alexa, you know, they'll, it's, it's just so many different things that they're continuing to develop. Uh, drones, you know, lots of different things. And of course, from my um, area that I research, cybersecurity, all those things play a part in that, you know, securing your data and information and who's, you know, re getting it and who's selling it and all that, those different types of things. So, yeah, because if it's it, 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 your technology, the people that are breaking into it are. So, this, yeah. you really have to stay ahead of the game. But, you, you know, it's, it, I mean, it's, it's like you said, you're never going to get bored with it. You're always going to have no. to learn new things. Um, which leads me to my next thing, because one thing where all the kids are watching on MacBooks right now, uh, and that's great, you know, but um, they, all, they all don't want to use anything but iOS, you know, the Windows, you yeah. know, I, I don't like that. So how important is, even if you don't want to be a computer science professional, how important right. is it to learn multiple operating systems to be successful as any professional? Yeah, because, you know, at different jobs, you know, not everybody is using the device that you're using. So you have to adapt and be able to adapt to those different operating systems. So just because you like Mac doesn't mean that your job will like Mac, you know, because a lot of the systems um, like Windows, there may be a contract from um What's the name of it? From from that they have with the government to only use those systems, so you have to know how to use those as well. Mac is good; they still have flaws. I know you've probably heard that you know um, they're uh, security proof; nothing can get in. But lately, there have been threat actors that have been attacking those devices, and they've had critical updates and all that. So they're not as secure as you think they are. Just like with Windows, you know. When you have those updates and things that come on your devices, you have to go ahead and update those because that gives um, a threat actor a, an opportunity to uh, possibly steal your information from your computer. So, yeah, it's just, you know, you have to learn different devices. And these young kids today, they, they are very adaptable. So it's not hard for them to, you know, learn those different devices. Yeah. And, and another thing about computer science that is so interesting than other fields is that, you know, what we've heard from a lot of these tech uh, from these tech pros is that they're more worried about people with the experience and the certifications more so than they are degree. So this is a field where you get your bachelor's in computer science, you can start working full time. And if you wanted to do like you and get a PhD master's, you could do that on the side and mm -hmm. be able to still work full time and not find yourself in a ton of student debt. Yeah, that's true. And, um, you know, some people do that, you know, uh, they'll get their bachelor's degree, but, you know, some of the companies that they work for will pay for them to get that advanced degree. So, you know, they won't have that debt. The school, the company that they work for will pay for it so they can get those certifications and those extra things. And a lot of jobs require that you get certain certifications. So they'll hire you with a bachelor's degree, but depending on the type of job you have, they might want you to get a specific type of certification, but they'll pay for it though. So, you know, there are benefits to, you know, just go ahead and get your bachelor's degree and then look for the perks that the company offers you because, you know, that way you can save money, you know, and still get advance yourself um, in that field. Yeah. And, and again, you know, and, and we'd be remiss if we really didn't talk about Jackson State because uh, obviously here in Madison County, we're, we're huge supporters of everything that's going on over there. Um, so, if, if somebody's interested in your program, what are some of the things that uh, that you guys offer and things that a student could expect if they came in as a freshman or as a community college transfer? Okay, so um, currently we, in our undergraduate program, we offer a variety of courses. Of course, the basic courses that you need to be to major in computer science, such as the programming courses where you would learn C++ or Java, um, you know, the basics, then you would move up to uh, the intermediate stage and then the advanced stage where you would learn about data structures. We also offer courses in data science, which is the new emerging field where a lot of people are becoming more um, privy to and want to work in because it's pretty much just studying data. We're going to spend a lot of time in data science next semester. They just don't know it yet. Oh, oh, yeah. And data science is where it's at now, because we have all this data from all these devices, you know, they're collecting data and reporting back, but they they don't 
there's a need to understand what the data is telling them. So that's what data science is, figuring out what the data is saying to you. And data science is also being used, you know, sometimes when you go on Facebook or these other sites and you search for something somewhere else, and then when you scroll, you say, oh, but I just looked for that somewhere else. They have implanted that in there, you know, based on the data science and the information that you've been doing, you know, it pulls up there too. So, um, we teach students about that and, you know, different aspects of data science. We also offer courses in cybersecurity. Um, I teach a few courses um, there. We have cybersecurity, uh, security awareness, you know, for incoming freshmen and sophomore, whoever wants to take that. Uh, computer security, digital forensics, um, mobile device forensics. Um, and several other courses. And we do have courses in artificial intelligence, which is a, um, a subset of that. Um, when you get to the graduate level, we have machine learning and different courses um, to that effect as well. But we have a data science focused program in the graduate program because we collaborate with the, uh, the I can't think of the name of the cds &E program, Computationally Data Enabled Science Program, which focuses on data science. So, you know, we have lots of courses in that as well. Uh, we do have, we have modified our um, curriculum um, to allow students more freedom to find what they like. So we have several elective options so that you can, you know, focus on certain things that you might be interested in in the courses that we offer. So if you're more um, interested in data science, well, we have some additional data science courses that you can take, cybersecurity, well, you can take that series of courses that we offer. So um, we're, we're doing a lot to uh, provide the students with opportunities for them to explore and find out pretty much what they would like to do once they leave. And we have courses also where we focus on getting you ready when you graduate to find that job that you wanna, wanna um, pursue or con continue in. Yeah, and one of the coolest things to me about y'all's department, and uh, a lot of people don't know this, but I love it, is that you really could get an international, uh, inter international tour uh, in your guys' department. You have professors from all over the world and students oh, yes. from all over the world. So you would mm -hmm. get, on top of the, of the technical mm -hmm. knowledge, you would get the experience of working with people from all different cultures, which to, to me is super yes. cool. Yes, yes, and we have lots, and you're you're right about that. We do have a lot of students from other countries, you know, that come to all the way to you know Little Jackson, Mississippi, to Jackson State, from Africa, from Germany, from you know all these other places in Europe, and you know want to come here and study computer science. So not only that, you get to interact with them and learn some of the things that you know you may not know, but they know, and you can work with them on that. And we do have like International Day where all the cultures with the other um, ethnicities get together and they show us their. Um, their backgrounds and flags and the foods they like to eat and all those th different things they share with everyone. So it's, it's a cultural experience for everyone. But yeah, you definitely get to work with different professors from different countries and all of that. So it's it's wonderful. That's really cool. Um, but I do have some questions from the students. Uh, okay. First one is Ja'Kayla Page. She's a sophomore. And she asked, what drove you to be a professor at Jackson State after going to Tougaloo, Mississippi State? Well, actually... Um, I, when I was at Tublu, um, I signed up for the Ronald E. McNair program. Um, and Ronald E. McNair was an astronaut that died on the, uh, when he went into space and in, in the, the, not the astronaut, the rocket blew up. Um, so they created a grant program, a program after him. So I attended Ole Miss. Uh, during one summer and pretty much what they instilled in us is that we need to get a um, graduate degree and go as far as we possibly could. And, you know, Dr. Ronald McNair, he had a PhD as well. So, you know, they instilled in us, you know, go ahead and go and go and go until you get your PhD degree. And I kind of, I guess, always in the back of my mind thought about being a teacher because I really didn't know what I wanted to do. But that path led me to Mississippi State as well. But, you know, when you think back, you're playing with your cousins, um, you see, you know, you be, you play teacher and all that kind of stuff. All this stuff kind of plays into, you know, kind of what you're going to be doing, um, I guess, later on in life. Because when I was a child, my mom had bought me one of those computers. I was like, what is this thing? But it had like a little book with it and it had code. And I didn't know at the time what it was, but 
um, as I got older and got to college, I was like, that was actually, I was actually programming and didn't even realize it. So, you know, back then I had a little computer that I was programming, didn't even know what I was doing. But um, those things, I guess you could say, drove me into teaching. And I love to teach people and, you know, see that they learn things. And I love it. I've been doing this for 11 years. So. Okay. And then, uh, you know, I'm glad you mentioned the Ronald McNear program because we actually had a Velma Jackson alum that led that program at Sutter Miss of the past few years. Ashley, she's at Jackson State now, Dr. Jessica Love. Um, and also, uh, for those who don't know, Ronald McNair, the rotunda at the planetarium is named after him. Um, oh, wow. uh, not the rotunda, the, the atrium. It's the, the, Ronald, the Ronald McNair atrium. I know it's been closed for a while, but it was named for him after the Challenger disaster. So I, I'm glad, yeah, glad, we got yeah. to, uh, glad we got to mention Ronald McNair. Uh, now, this is uh, Jasmine Williamson. She's a sophomore. Yeah. Um, and she asked, what's the hardest part about learning new technologies in your field? Um, it's not so much learning the new technology because from the computer science standpoint, it's about learning about how to program them. But I guess if you think about the new technologies, um, it just depends on what you're trying to do with them, I think. Um, in this field. So if you're trying to develop them, then that's, you know, on the software engineering side. But if you're trying to protect and defend them, then that that's where cybersecurity comes into the, the, um, the picture. So, you know, we have all these devices, how do you best secure them so that your information isn't stolen? Um, and even with the new technologies that are developed, you know, we all have a learning curve with those. But it just depends on what you're trying to do with the technology, I believe. Uh, what is the, the primary focus? Of what, what am I? It depends on what the technology is and what you plan to do with it. So, but everything is learnable. You know, if you do your research nowadays, you know, everything is on YouTube. People have used it probably already, but they can show you, you know, if you don't know what to do, um, how they use it and all of that. So it's, I, I think it should be easy to learn. Yeah, and, 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 and with the new way the world is going, you know, if something's not, if there's not an app for it, create one. And I know you, yeah. uh, they also have that in y'all's program as well. I know that's not, it's not your specific area, but I know that is available in the computer science program at Jackson State. Is the app yes, we, it, it actually is, um, you know, uh, in addition to programming, which helps you to be, you know, good at developing sites and all of that, we actually offer courses in web design and wow. all that in our department and the art department has wow. um, courses in web design. So, you know, you could um, go for either one, you know, work, take the class in that department and take it in hours, but we offer it as well. So, yeah, you get the best. Gotcha. Now, this is Aaliyah Chester. She's a junior. And she asked, you told us why you got into computer science, but what made you focus on, on digital forensics? Uh, well, while I was at uh, Mississippi State, um, I was getting my master's and uh, there was this course, digital forensics. I never heard of it, barely heard of cybersecurity, but I was intrigued because I didn't know what it was. I'd never heard of it. So um, as I took the class, Dr. David Dampier, he was my um, instructor for that class and also my advisor on my uh, dissertation. Um, I learned a lot and, and it was very intriguing because, you know, I never thought about investigating computers and trying to, you know, find out what happened. And, you know, I like that kind of stuff. I guess you could say, you know, um, get being nosy. I don't know. <laughs> but trying to figure things out. I'm a mathematical type person. I like to figure out, solve problems and all that. And that's pretty much what it is, solving problems um, based on a limited um, amount of information. But based off of that, how what conclusions can you draw from that? And how can you prove or disprove that something is or is not? So, you know, there's a lot that goes into talking about fingerprint with hash values, how they are like fingerprints and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot that goes into it, but it's very, um, I, I feel like it's fun. And when I teach the class um, at Jackson State, a lot of students take it and they, they really enjoy it. That's definitely different. That's, that's not your run of the middle college class. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, it's got one more from the students. This is Destiny Smith. She's a sophomore. And she asked, what are the most important skills a computer science student would need at Jackson State? Um, some of the, the best skills um, I think you would need is uh, open-mindedness, one, uh, being able to work with others, uh, working with a team, but math skills. So, you know, if you are not as good in math, make sure that um, you, you get those math skills because as a computer science student, you have to take up to Cal 3. I don't want to scare anybody, but Calculus 3 um 
is uh, the highest math you have to take. You do have to take a statistics class, which is not bad, I don't think. But, you know, if you come through high school and you pass trigonometry and algebra and all that stuff, that puts you on the path towards calculus one, two, and three that you have to um, take. You have to be a creative thinker. Um, think outside the box, you know, don't just focus on one thing um, and be a problem solver. You have to want to solve problems because this is what computer science is all about. You have to want to solve problems because um, they'll give you um, a, a program and ask you to do this. You have to be able to do it based on what you've learned in those programming classes. Write a program that calculates the time in 12 hours or whatever. That's an easy one. But you would need to know how to do that. What do you put on, you know, um, what types of code would you need to do this? So you have to be um, very creative um, and just work hard. <laughs> and it's, it's going to be a lot of long nights. But it all pays off in the end, because like I said before, you know, our students, when they graduate, they don't have a problem finding a job. Yeah. And the so, jobs come looking for them. Exactly. And that's what, you know, something I always say is the challenges are high, but the rewards are great. They, um, they are. And, and, and especially in your guys' program over there. Well, now we're almost out of time and we thank you so much for joining us. But before we go, um, why don't, you know, I really want you to hear from you why computer science need these, needs these young people. Because like you said yourself, it's not going away. The jobs are going to come looking for them. So especially these young ladies and, and, uh, and these young black students, why mm -hmm. is computer science so in need of their skills? Uh, they are, African-American students are highly sought after um, because the, we are considered the minority. And there's not a lot of African-American students in com computer science. And the demand is high for um, minorities in this field because we, Oh, I just say African Americans bring um, a lot of creativity, a different way of thinking about solving problems too, and that's why um, we're highly sought after. It. We have people from everywhere coming to Jackson State looking for our students. We have a conference, the Bay of Conflict Conference, the Black Engineering Conference that we take our students to, and when they leave there, they have three or four job offers. Wow! Um, just there, you know, before they even graduate, and they could be a junior, you know. So, but. Um, there's a, a need for more um, Black students to um, be a part of computer science because there's not a lot, but um, the, the rewards are high. There's, no, there's a lot of jobs, a lot of jobs available and not enough people to fill them not enough people to fill them and we need more students more students in general but definitely more african-american students absolutely well again i know it's a crazy weekend up there i i, I look forward to experiencing it uh experience it from the street as an uber driver it's going to be a great time oh yeah campus. so i hope you enjoy it. you guys have earned it again dr april tanner De the department of computer science engineering jackson state university uh mm -hmm. make sure you know if you guys are interested make sure you hit her up she got a lot of great knowledge oh, and yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, yeah, have a good day. Yeah.